Hey there. I recently made a video using the Microfreak as a drum machine in my live performance. And some people asked, how do you do that? Uh, so this is going to be a tutorial of uh, drum synthesis and sequencing on the Microfreak. Uh, it's also sort of going to be a general tutorial of drum synthesis, uh, although the Microfreak makes it kind of easy. So this is sort of what it's going to sound like. So that was the pattern that I used in the video. Uh, so yeah, now that we know sort of what we're going into, let's uh, initialize the preset and start from scratch. So this is Microfreak's initial preset, more of a synthy thing. So we're gonna go over to the noise oscillator and we're gonna use this. So I'm gonna turn down all of these parameters and take them all the way down to zero. So now you're going to hear pretty much nothing. But we're going to make a sound using the filter itself. So Microfink has a filter. I'm going to switch to high pass filter mode and take it all the way down to around 50 hertz and take the resonance all the way up. So now the filter itself is going to self oscillate and give us that sound at around 50 hertz. And that's just a very deep bassy sound. Um, you probably can't hear it, but if you move the cutoff up, you can hear that just single note going up and down with a little bit of crackle from the noise oscillator. So now, uh, that note, no matter where I press on the keyboard is the same. And for now, let's, um, try to make it so that that note moves around with your presses or at least a little bit. So I'm going to go to the matrix and go all the way over to key slash arp and cut off. So now what key you use is gonna change the cutoff. Uh, if you set this at around like 50, that would be key tracking for the filter. And you can hear it more. So right there we have like at least a little bit of a change in uh, the noise. So we're going to use this later, but for now let's keep it there so that our preset is at least a little bit uh, chromatic and you can use all the notes. So we're going to make a kick and for the kick we're going to use the cutoff. Uh, we're going to attach an envelope to it to make it go from very high to very low very fast and that's what gives the kick its signature punch and sound instead of just a low bassy note that you can barely hear. So <clears throat> maybe I'll increase the cutoff just to begin with. There, that should be good. So I'm going to use the cycling envelope in normal envelope mode. So make sure that uh, light is on. Take the rise completely to zero. Take the fall at around like 70 maybe MS very fast. Sustain all the way down, amount all the way up, and then using shift, I'm going to change the shape to 0%. Uh, and now I'm going to go back to the matrix, go to cycling envelope and cutoff, and we're going to set that to at around maybe 20. Let's start with 20 and see what it sounds like. So now the envelope, whenever I hit a note, is going to go up all the way down very fast and take that pitch. And that sounds like a kick maybe like a little bit like an 808 because it's uh, fairly sustained um i think i would like it just a little punchier so i'm gonna take it up there so you can hear the click and you can go crazy with this you can take it all the way make it like a laser or we're gonna keep it around here Now to make this more of a kick instead of an 808 type sound, I'm going to take the sustain of the amp envelope all the way down and change the decay to around like one second maybe. So now even if I hold it, it's just going to be a kick. So we have our kick. It is pitched so you can choose which one you like the most. Um, and now that we have our kick, we're going to see how we can use some parameters here 
to change from a kick into a snare. So the noise oscillator, you can add some noise to your whatever you're using from just white noise to more pitched cowbell-like noises. You're gonna take it about here and then with timbre, you can change sort of the feel of that noise. And right there, we have a snare. Maybe a little too boomy for a snare, but uh, we'll make do. So just by changing these two, we can switch from a kick to a snare. And then uh, finally, I'm gonna change some more parameters to turn this into a hi-hat. And I think the main ones here are to remove the boominess completely because hi-hats don't have a, any boom. And I'm gonna do that by taking the resonance all the way down. And then I'm gonna take the amp envelope and make it very, very short. And that sounds a little bit like a hi-hat. Maybe we can change the... More metallic. But I like the white noisy one. That's sort of right there. Right there. So yeah. So you have a sort of like a hi-hat. You can play around and figure out what you're gonna do. So now, we're gonna use Microfix Sequencer in order to make a pattern out of this. And Microfix Sequencer doesn't only store notes, but it can also store four different modulation lanes where you can change the parameters across the sequence. So we're gonna see right here that uh, we can record our notes. Let me take the noise back down to a kick. Uh, take the resonance up and the decay at around one second again. And we're gonna record pretty much all of the notes in a 16 uh, note sequence. So I'm gonna enable the sequencer. I'm gonna press record, that's the record button. It says step one of 16 and we're gonna enter the notes. So I'm gonna use this low C for the kick. I'm gonna use uh, these high notes for the hi-hats. The, these don't really matter, but for the kick and the snare, it does matter because it affects the, the cutoff again. Uh, so we're gonna do one, two, three hi-hats, and then a snare right here. One, two, three hi-hats, another kick. One, two, three hi-hats, a snare. One, two, three. And now we have our sequence. So right now it's gonna sound nothing like what we expected to. Uh, if I hit play, I mean, it's cool. You can use it for, for some some electronic music for sure, uh, with a little bit of delay. Um, but we're gonna change the parameters across this and lock them to what we want in order to get the sounds that we want. So I'm gonna hit record again, and now you can use this uh, knob to scrub through the sequence. And wherever you land on each step, you can uh, set these parameters to whatever you want. So first step is a kick. And we're gonna set these both to off all the way down. The resonance, we're gonna make sure it's at 100 and the decay at around one second. Next step, this one was a hi-hat. And if you remember for the hi-hats, we go at around like 30, 100 here, no resonance. And the microfeed keeps on playing the sound so you can hear what it sounds like as you modulate it. And then the decay down to like, or here, and you can hear that's a hi-hat. Cool. Uh, next note, we don't need to change the modulation here, um, but we could, we could make this like a longer hi-hat. And then maybe like change a little bit of like the, yeah, make it a little bit lower like that. Next one, uh, I'm actually gonna leave this muted Here's our snare. Uh, for the snare, we went to around 30, 100 here. We had the resonance up and then the decay at around one second. Next, back to hi-hat. Take it down, take this down, 
and you can hear it. That's our hi-hat. I'm gonna keep these the same. Now, step nine is our kick again, and you know the drill. One second here, these all the way down. And you can make this a little bit dirtier just for fun. So I'm gonna leave this at around uh, 40. Next one, hi-hat. You know the drill. All the way up, no resonance. Down here, 11, keep it like this, keep it like this. Here's our snare. We want the decay to be longer. There, nice. And then our final hi-hats, I'm gonna make them like a little bit longer and a little bit noisier. But still no resonance, so. Started like 600, take it up to one second, take it up to three seconds, and maybe take this down. All right, so now that we've set our modulations, we can hear the sequence again, and the micro freak is gonna change between those sounds very fast. And you can do various things while this is playing. Any of the parameters that you didn't modulate, you can change. So I can change the cutoff. I can make it uh, a little louder with the sustain up. I can change the cycling envelope. And that's how you can do a little bit of a live performance uh, on this. You can set the LFO to modulate things across time and stuff like that. Um, I think the Micro Freaker is great for drum synthesis. Uh, it has uh, some nice oscillators. You can even do like some other of the oscillators that are not the noise oscillator. You can introduce noise and make uh, those types of sounds. You can always do a kick with any oscillator just using the filter. So you can get crazier things than this. Um, one of the things I liked to do while I was working on this was leave it playing and change the type. But of course the noise oscillator is the one that's gonna sound the most like uh, drums. Uh, so that's fun. A um, Couple things to note. There's only four modulation lanes, so you can only change four of the parameters across the sequence. Uh, there's two different patterns that you can switch between. Right now, I only filled one, and it would take too long to fill another one. Uh, but these can go up to 64 steps. If you go to Utility, Preset, and then over down to Sequence Length, you can change that to whatever you want, between one and six, uh, 4 and 64. And that's about it. We didn't really touch the shape, but you could play around with this. Uh, let's see what it sounds like if we change the shape while the sequence is running. And you retain the kick because everything happens with the cutoff there. So if you have like a four on the floor that you want to do, you can just do it that way and then play around with all the other noises. Uh, they can morph across your uh, performance. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's how I used the Micro Freak as a drum machine. Uh, I, again, I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's a very versatile sense. The sequencer definitely helps here. Um, and yeah, have fun, uh, get some results. You can send me some of your patches and uh, sequences if you want. Uh, if you follow this tutorial, that would be great appreciate that and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon bye